Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, memory overclocking with this here memory. Well, with this here memory, these these memory sticks, they don't come as a kit, right? You have to buy them individually, so you can't really call it a memory kit. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to be overclocking these memory sticks, and what makes these special is that they are 32 gigabyte unregistered non-ECC memory sticks. So you can like stick this into your Z390 motherboard and it works. You can st you should theoretically be able to stick this into like Ryzen motherboards and it also works. Um, it uses a two rank, uh, dual rank configuration, which you can see right here. Um, stock voltage is 1.2 volts and it has a, like the SP, well, we can actually just look at the SPD information here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit so that I can see it. Um, so yeah, two ranks. It's 2666 CL19, mega, uh, CL19. and uh, yeah, it also uses the Samsung, or is it, MDI, there. So that's what that uses, and the, I'm, I'm wondering if they have the PCB revision inside the, the SPD somewhere, but I don't think they do. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not seeing it. But that doesn't really matter too much. Um, like, it, either way, it's like a, it's a B2 uh, DDR4 PCB layout. So that's, uh, it's like an A2 layout, except for dual rank memory sticks. It looks exactly the same. If you don't know what those are, uh, you, you probably have to go dig through my YouTube channel, because I'm pretty sure I've made, mentioned the differences several times at this point. Um, <clears throat> anyway... Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna see how this overclocks because uh, it is just generic green PCB Samsung DDR4 and it is 32 gigabytes So, you know for people who want like an ITX workstation or something th This is this is perfect, right? Because you can have your ITX board and still stick 64 gigs of it uh, of RAM in it. So Yeah, I'm wondering how it'll overclock and we, we shall see how it does today So I'm gonna be using this Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX board for this Um because uh, it already supports this memory. Um, I think most motherboard vendors at this point probably have BIOSes out for all of their boards that support these 32 gigabyte memory sticks. Um, but uh, yeah, like ASRock is just the, like the, the ASRock board here was already set up on, on my desk and uh, I just needed to swap the memory sticks and update the BIOS. So that, that's why I went with this board and not something else because we'll like, yeah, um, most convenient. So anyway, I have the CPU overclocked to five gigahertz. That's all these settings over here. Here, the memory is going to be on auto. We're going to run some IDA. We're going to run some Geekbench. Um, yeah, auto settings for everything here. Save and exit. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to what to expect from this memory whatsoever, because um, it is uh, you know M die, and I've never I've never seen M anybody overclock any any Samsung M die. I think I've heard of somebody, well, no, I think I've heard of someone messing with it, but I did. I can't remember much much of what they, they managed to do with it. So, let's start with IDUP, and uh, yeah, if we go into Task Manager, I have 64 gigs of RAM, if we check CPU-Z, you can see that we do, yeah, 64 gigs of RAM, if we go to the SPD tab, we only have two memory slots. Um, and we do also have ASRock Timing Configurator. Bam! Right there. So, yeah, the auto the auto TRFC looks atrocious, but that's probably just, uh, like, this is a JDEC memory kit. So, basically, this is like a JDEC profile. So, it defaults to this. You don't even need to enable XMP because, yeah, you, you can you can see it right here. JDEC uh, 11, right? And JDEC 10. So, this, this, you install it in a motherboard and it immediately defaults to 2666. Um, which is also why, like, some of these timings are super loose, because JDEC preset. Um, so, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Like, normally, as the memory density increases, the, the TRFC, uh, like, specification increases with it. So, it's pretty normal that it's super high, but that doesn't necessarily mean it won't, like, come down. It's just like, yeah, that, that's just how the JDEC spec works. So, uh, let's run some uh, benchmarks. Starting with memory read. Uh, 
and we get about a little bit under 40 gigabytes per second. So I'll just, well, let's not round it up. So 39.4 uh, gigabytes per second. Let's do a write. Also, okay, that's approaching 40 gigs. And copy. I don't really care about the stock performance that much. <laughs> so, <laughs> though it's not bad, like at least it's 2666, right? Like as a starting point, that's pretty good. I think uh, G-Skill already demonstrated some uh, 32 gigabyte dims at Computex doing, uh, what it, what was it, 4,000 megahertz, but the timings were absolutely atrocious. But that's what I'm kind of going to be considering as, uh, like, that's what I'm going to be basing all of my timing information of. For the primaries, we're probably going to be going to, like, 19.30.30 or, like, 21.30.30. Just to make sure that, like, because I don't want to be limited by memory frequency. Like, well, I want to see how far we can ramp up the memory frequency and then see what the timings will do after that. Um, so, yeah, we're probably going to go with, like, 21, 31, 31, 63 primary timings. And 45, uh, 54 nanoseconds. Or, well, I'll just round that up to 55 nanoseconds there of latency. So that's not exactly incredible. Um, but it's also not terrible because it is at least 2666, right? So it's not as bad as if you had like a JDEC 2133 memory kit. Just quickly run a Geekbench. There's no point testing something like Cinebench. Cinebench doesn't care about memory whatsoever. <laughs> or, well, okay, no. It, it cares about memory, but very little. It's not very sensitive to it. The reason I kind of like Geekbench for, like, quick memory testing is that it's a little bit heavier than... Well, it's actually one of the heavier memory uh, benchmarks, like, for memory stability. It's not, like, passing Geekbench doesn't actually mean that, hey, your memory is stable. It's just that if you finish Geekbench, you can probably finish a bunch of other benchmarks. Whereas if you finish Cinebench, uh, that doesn't mean anything because you can finish Cinebench on memory settings that are super unstable. Um... Because it's just, it, it doesn't use the memory enough to really cause any issues. So there we go, and we're getting about 5.5k uh, memory score. So that's not, yeah, that's not great. We really, like, good configurations are like 7,000 points plus. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if we can squeeze something like that out of this memory kit, right? Let's restart, and start with the overclocking. So we could go like nice and slowly and start at like stock timings and see how far we can push the frequency on stock timings and that kind of thing. But that's just going to take forever. So we're, we're, we're going to do the one, two, skip a few thing where we're just going to go bam like that. Lock it to 2T. Um, leave everything else auto. I, I trust the motherboard to do a decent job of everything on here. Um, and now, now we start and I think we can probably go straight to 3000. What do you say? You know what? We should save a profile. All oh, right, Azrock has profiles here. Um, dash OC. Oh, it's, it's booting. Okay, that's good. So we're, we're just going to crank up the frequency without actually paying attention to, like, stability for now. Because, again, I, I just want to save time. Um, we're still at 1.2 volts on the memory. Okay, so 3,000 works. Let's go to 3,200. I do have a fan sitting on the sitting on the memory sticks. So that might be a bit cheating, but still. Oh, 3200 works. Nice. 
Yeah, so this is going pretty smooth so far. I mean, up to 3200 megahertz generally shouldn't be a problem unless you're on some really old uh, DDR4 memory ICs, um, which actually would have a problem with 3200. So let's go up to 3466 at this point. Oh, still posting. This is really not bad. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm straight up impressed with this. Like, this is a pretty serious overclock, considering we're on 64 freaking gigabytes of memory. Like, I'm actually, yeah, I'm just straight up impressed. Okay, so this board, like, my experience with dual rank memory on this motherboard is that it sort of just stalls at, like, 3600, 37, 33 megahertz. Um, so that might actually, like, that might be the limiting factor, not the memory sticks. And if that happens, if we hit, like, 3866 or something, then I'm gonna have to go and get, like, another motherboard in a, in a, in a different video, um, or maybe just in, in further testing, I'm gonna grab a different motherboard and use that instead, which I'm gonna be grabbing the MSI Z390i Gaming Edge AC, so the little ITX board from MSI, because that one has, in my experience, done really, really well with other dual rank memory sticks, whereas this... I mean, I've gotten this to, to go all the way up to 4,000. It's just that I need to do a whole bunch of extra work. Um, that, um, yeah, basically is not ideal as far as I'm concerned that I have to do all of that. And I don't know if that all those tricks that I used before will work for these memory sticks. So, yeah. Okay. 3,600. Whoa. This is going way too easy. <laughs> okay, 37.33. Oh, I think it's starting to fail. Yeah, it's starting to fail. But still, 3600 on a 2666 megahertz memory kit, that, that is a... That's pretty... That's, that's a solid overclock. Yeah, so now we're going to get the error recovery message, probably. Yeah, we got the error recovery. Um, we're going to go back down to 3600, and hopefully it'll cold boot that, because I don't know if, like, because we did step up the memory frequency, you know, slowly. So it might have been, we might have actually trained the memory controller throughout the process of that. So we'll see if it can cold boot this right now. There. If we can cold boot 3600 that well, it, this is not technically a cold boot, but it's like, we, we did just lose all our settings, so <laughs> it, it's not like, uh, not like stepping up the frequency slowly. Cool, so now we're at 3600. Um, I guess at this point we start tightening up memory times. Oh my god, that TRFC is disgusting. That is awful. Oh my, like, ugh. Okay. Okay, that's really bad, but let's see if we can run like 19... Uh, 26. Um. And I'll leave everything else auto for now. I think that'll work. Oh, wait. I think we're gonna see error recovery. Are we? Oh, no. No, it did work. Okay, so I'm thinking... I, I'm thinking let's bump up the voltage a little... Well, okay, you know what? Let's do a let's do a baseline performance test right now. Well, uh, another test of the performance right now, because it is at 3600 megahertz. The timings are atrocious, but, uh, I mean, what do you expect from 64 gigs of RAM? If we can run like 3617 uh, CL17 or 18 that I'd be I think I'd be pretty happy with it. It might even, you know, this might behave kind of like uh say Samsung uh eDie where your TRCD and TRP have a really high uh wall but your TCL can actually go really low. So we might be able to run something that looks really silly like a 3600 CL1424 or something like that. Uh maybe a 1426, right? What are we on right now in terms of timings? Yeah, we're on 1926. So let's start with Geekbench 3. Because Ida, Ida doesn't like, is lighter than Geekbench. 
in terms of memory stability. So if we can't pass Geekbench 3, then this, this is completely a worthless memory overclock because it'll maybe work for like Cinebench. <laughs> That's about it. This is still at 1.2 volts. Like, we didn't even have to raise the voltage. I'm impressed. I wonder if it would... Oh, maybe if I raised the voltage, it would have clocked higher. That's the thing about doing this kind of thing, is just, like, with memory, there's so many combinations of settings you can try that um, it doesn't really work well, even as, like... This is going to be a really long video, but even then, it's just, like, I don't feel like we're going to cover everything I, I want to cover. Um, and ultimately, when I get a memory kit, I normally spend even you know, tens of hours with it before I go like, yeah, this, this is, this is where it stops, especially if it's a memory kit I've never used before. So we're getting 6.7 thousand points, which, uh, that's a good Geekbench 3 score. Um, it, well, good, not amazing, but much better than the 5.5k that before. Um, um, like for, for, like, uh, extreme overclockers will be pushing, like, 10 to 11,000 for Geekbench 3. And anything really over 9,000 is, is pretty hard to do in terms of memory performance. So, yeah, for, for, like, a daily configuration, this is actually pretty solid. Especially considering we're still on 1.2 volts. Um, so now let's get some IDA, IDA passes in. We should see the memory bandwidth be significantly higher bef than before because we do have the memory frequency way up. And the latency should also maybe be a little bit better. I don't think the timings are that much worse than they were at like 2666. So yeah, we're now doing 50 gigabytes per second instead of 30. That's nice. Um, memory right. I mean, instead of 40, um, previously was, was doing like 39.4, now we're doing 50. Right is doing uh, 53.5, I guess, but we'll just call it 53. Um, 53 gigabytes per second instead of 40 gigabytes per second, so we picked up another 13 gigabytes per second there. So I assume the copy test is going to be around plus 10 gigs as well, so around 48 gigabytes per second. Yeah. Oh, I, sp I nailed that. So yeah, we're, we're getting about 48 gigs and uh, memory latency we're going to get. Forty eight point four nanoseconds. Yay. So we actually improved on the latency, which is not really surprising considering that, you know, the, the timings aren't, like, they're loose, but they're not worse than, like, they need to be, like, they need to be far worse than at 2666 to offset the increase in frequency. So, yeah, that, that's neat. So 48.4 uh, na nanoseconds, that's not terrible. Um, Though normally I can get like daily configurations for uh, Z390 to do under 40 nanoseconds. So let's see if, if we can, you know, squeeze some more performance out of this kit. I'm, I'm really, I really want to raise the voltage, <laughs> but there's no point doing that if, if everything is going so well so right now, right? So voltages, yeah. I, this board's really good about not doing stupid things to your voltages. Like, okay, these are a little bit high, but they're not significantly higher than what I would go for, so. Cool with that. Okay, um, let's see, 23. Oh, that still works. I'm surprised. I was expecting that to fail. Oh, wait. Oh, no. That's still... Made it. 
Nice. Ah, no, don't want that. 1921, whoa. Destroy that, 1721. I can't... Oh, okay, no, that was an error recovery. Okay, so let's whack some more voltage in the memory sticks and see see what that does. So we're going to start with 1.35 volts just because I don't know how this memory scales whatsoever. Oh, yep, yeah, that, that makes that work. Okay, so it does scale with voltage at least up to 1.35 volts. <laughs> kind of, kind, kind of tempted to try this again. All right, da -da -da. and that. I think it'll post this time. Yeah. Okay, so 3600 is... Oh, wait, no, that was error recovery, wasn't it? Yeah, that was error recovery. Okay, so, no. <laughs> that does not work. I was like, okay, it scales with voltage past 36... Like, it needs more voltage past 3600, but apparently, no. Um, that's not the requirement. Okay, so let's try just 21. I wonder if we can run, like, 36 for that. We're going to leave 2T just because uh, I don't think that'll tighten up at all. Try 12. 800? Like, it was defaulting to over 900 for 3600 megahertz, so... Oh, and we're still at 3733. That's no good. There we go. Okay, so I guess we'll just like see how far we can drop the TRFC right now. So, 700. That can go pretty low. Six hundred. I mean, to be fair, if you had like a good kit of BDI at thirty six hundred megahertz, you can probably run like two hundred TRFC. But <laughs> like, I I'm surprised that you know, considering that it defaults to like a thousand, we we can go to almost half of that already. Okay, now we're going to be at less than half that, half the, the auto setting. Actually, no, still a little bit above half because the auto setting was like 989 or something, right? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't seem to like that. Yeah, it's power cycling. It doesn't like that. Okay, well, it's still 600. Not not bad, <laughs> considering how much RAM we have. Do I expect error message? Yeah. I'm going to bump that back up to 600. 
And I want to see what the rest of those default to. Actually, we should do another performance test right now. I think. So, as before, we're going to start with Geekbench, just because if Geekbench crashes, then testing anything else is completely pointless. Okay, we're over 7k already. That's nice. Okay, and it is stable enough, so let's do Ida. Okay, 52 gigabytes. So, yeah, we're just tightening up timing. So, at this point, we're not going to see huge uh, leaps and, uh, like, yeah, we're not going to see huge leaps in the bandwidth at this point. Oh, actually, no, we, we could still see some pretty major improvements in bandwidth, but it'll come once we get, like, the rest of the sub-timing. So, we're doing what well, right is now doing 54 gigs instead of 53. Um... Okay, 50 gigs, not bad. Memory latency. This is where I expect the biggest drop. Forty-two, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah down to forty-two point two nanoseconds. And copy was fifty gigs. Instead of, yeah, so we picked up like two gigs across the board in bandwidth and, and a massive drop in latency. Nice. And let's check out the configurator. So, yeah, we're running 13600, 96, 16, 7, 38. So, I'm, I'm going to focus on uh, TCWL's 15. Oh, then we might be able to run CL16 in that case. Um,. TREF is fourteen thousand. We can we can raise that to like twenty eight thousand or something. So yeah, let's restart. Twenty eight thousand. Okay, that still works. So, next stop, um, 44,000, and then after that, we'll just max it out completely at 64,000. Now, the thing about TREFI is that that is the refresh interval, and TRFC is kind of the same risk, um, is that these timings actually affect the refresh interval of your memory. 
So they can cause, um, like, basically the issue with them is that you'll lose data integrity over time rather than based on load. So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind with them. And I think some memory tests offer, like, a, a refresh interval test. But, um... Uh, yeah, I'm not, not sure off the top of my head right now which ones it is, so. I, I don't, like, like I'm basically not recommending that you blindly max out your TREFI. That's generally a bad idea. So let's go to 64,000. Because with memory, just because it boots and runs some benchmarks doesn't mean that it's it's stable, so. Okay, well, that should give us a big performance uplift, what we just did right now. <laughs> DRAM config. So let's see if we can run, like, 1619. That I would consider, like, really not bad at all in terms of timings. Okay, capture card freaked out, but system still seems to be... Oh, nope, that's uh, that's an error. Yeah, okay, that erred. I wonder if that's the TRCD doing that, or if that's the T... I think it's probably the TRCD. That one tends to have... Uh, like, there's only, like, one memory IC where TRCD can match TCL across the entire frequency range, and that's BDI. Everywhere else, it normally requir it needs to be significantly higher than TCL. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think it's TRCD. Much as I am proven wrong. Yeah, okay. I am wrong. Seventeen nineteen. I guess this could behave like V die. So I guess I should try lower TRCD all the way down to 17 and see what happens. Okay, nope, that's probably not going to happen because the, the board just failed. Still, 1721 at 3600. I mean, it's not incredible, but considering that this is like unbinned generic OEM Samsung, I'm sure, you know, the various memory vendors like G-Skill, Corsair, Team Group, uh, King Kingston, um, you know, all of these big memory vendors, I, I can imagine that they'll be able to bin this kind of memory into doing 3600, uh, you know, 16, potentially. Um, if they go through enough memory kits, maybe with more voltage, maybe, I don't know. Like, that's the thing, is just like, you know, this is two random sticks, for all I know, they're terrible. Okay. Let's see. So this is nine six seven thirty eight. Wonder if we can run. F well, okay. No, no. It's probably not going to work. If TCL is seventeen, then TCWL being at fifteen makes sense. Um. I want to see if it does 6.4. Okay, so like basically all the other DDR4 I've ever tested, it does 6.4 for uh, TRRD. So that's not super surprising. Let's go with 20. 
Might be able to push that all the way down to 16. Okay, it looks like that worked out. It's nice. Oh, and these are going down automatically at this point as well. So I'm actually going to leave that at 20 for now. Um, let's check out what, what we have going on with the tar cherries. So I think we might be able to do like 12, 12, 12, 12. And the rest actually look fine. I'm not going to touch the rest of them. <laughs> Those look okay. Um, though in my experience, for maybe for higher frequency, it would have made sense to run like 8, 4, uh, 8, 8, then 12, 12, 12, 40s. Uh, like 40, 30, 8, uh, 4, 8, 8, 8. Wait, am I getting that right? No. No, these sh two should also be like 12 or something, but... Like, that, that's for at least dual rank B-Die, so obviously I need to, to mess around with this some more. Um, but I'm not going to be cramming that into the, this video, because otherwise, like, there's also a bunch of settings, like, down here that I'd be messing with at that point, and it just takes forever. Um, so I don't really want to be doing that here right now. So we'll just roll with this, because this is a pretty, like, this is a pretty good set of timings as far as I'm concerned right now. Should perform pretty damn well. Shame about a f shame about the frequency though. Uh, so we'll see if the the twelve 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 um, tertiary thing s takes. I can't remember what those timings are called. <laughs> okay, well, let's run Geekbench. I guess we could also try like 1.45 volts and see if the the primary timings improve at all. Um, what else is there? Yeah, there, there's like that, that's the thing about memory is just like there's so many different combinations of things to try. And the other thing is I don't actually know like th this uh, the uh, Samsung M die I think is manufactured on the new uh, smaller nanometer process, so I don't actually know how this stuff will behave at high voltage. It might die. Um, which, considering how expensive it is, I don't really want to try, like, I don't really want to figure out if it dies at 1.5 volts or not. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm afraid this is where I draw the line, because these memory sticks are, like, 160 pounds each. Uh, and I have two of them, so, if I, like, I really don't want to blow up 32, 320 pounds worth of memory. Um, that's not very cost-effective. Okay, cool. 7.5k. So that's not bad at all. So I wonder what kind of latency we're getting now that we have all the, the timings somewhat cleaned up. Uh, where's Ida? And of course we're gonna like start memtest as well, which, oh my god, this is 64 gigs of RAM. Memtest on this has to take so damn long. <laughs> that's, the, that's the downside of having a lot of memory takes forever to validate that it's stable. Okay, so we're doing 53.5 gigs. So yeah, we picked up like another 1.5 gigs over the previous uh, 52 um, ish or like a gig. So we didn't really pick up a whole lot of speed there. Yeah, right is 56 gigs. That's not bad at all. Um, we're kind of hitting the limits of what you can do at this this kind of memory frequency. It's kind of the thing is just like we're only at 3600. If we were at a higher memory clock, then we, we could probably push uh, push 60, 60 gigs. But I think you need at least like 3866 for that. So, yeah, that's that's not going to happen. And we are on 52 gigs for copy. So that's really not bad either. And memory latency. I'd like to hit 40 nanoseconds. Yay, 40! 
0.2 nanoseconds. Yeah, so that's really not bad. Like, honestly, like, that, that is not bad for, for... Like, it's a 2666 CL19 memory kit, right? It's 32 gigs of RAM per stick. Um, and, and it runs 3600 megahertz. Like, that's... That's good. This is just straight up good. Especially considering that this is, like, generic green PCB OEM Samsung. Samsung doesn't do any real binning of their own. They basically bin for JDEC and that's it. So if you buy something like, say, Samsung OEM BDI, it tends to be absolutely terrible because BDI is really inconsistent in terms of quality. Um, but this stuff, I'm like, this is one random sample, right? I have two sticks here. They are relatively far apart in terms of serial number, but I wouldn't really draw too much of a conclusion from that. But, um, like, I have a, I have a few, like, unbinned sticks of B-Dye, and they suck. But this is unbinned M-Dye, and it seems pretty solid to me. Like, it's not incredible, right? It's not doing 4,000 megahertz or something, but... Still, 3600 CL17, that's, that's really not bad. And I would totally daily this stuff. Um, so, yeah, ba basically what I'm getting at is just like, you know, if all of the kits of, uh, high, of Samsung M-Die, um, 32 gig sticks of Samsung M-Die, if they all clock like this, I would totally go for this. If, if you need 64 gigs of RAM and, and you don't care about having like a... a and you don't care about, you know, um, what? I don't know. Like, well, I'm not sure that, well, th there might be 64 gig kits that are like 4x16 that are cheaper than this, but still, like, th this is definitely not a bad set of RAM, especially if they're all roughly this, this capable of overclocking, so. Let's modify one of these files. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, wait, so what is that? These are in batches of 5, right? Yeah, so that's 5 times 2,000... Um, what is that? That's 10 gigs each. Oh, no. So, yeah, this is like 28 gigs here, isn't it? Yeah, that's 28 gigs. So, that's 20 gigs. 40 gigs. 60 gigs. We're just gonna run with that. Oh, wait, that's a... Yeah, that is a batch file. Cool. Oh, boy. Hmm? Oh, yeah. The... <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll let it run for, like, a little bit. It's gonna take forever because we don't even have enough cores for this kind of thing at this point. <laughs> Oh, and it's already erroring right there. See? That one already failed. So, yeah, we are pushing it a little bit far. I'm, I'm going to see if it throws out any more errors. Right, where's the one with the error? Where'd it go? Did I cl oh, it's right there. Okay, wait, let's close that. There. Actually, I wonder if it retiles. There, that's a little bit better. Hmm, interesting. It's not puking up like a pile of errors instantly. Like a lot of other memory chips, like you you get one error and after that you get a bunch more really, really quickly, but this seems to be pretty happy. So I guess I guess there's just like something that's slightly off uh, in my settings and and this should be pretty easy to stabilize at this point. So with this kind of level of performance, um, and yeah, I need to test this stuff on some other motherboards just to, because uh, this motherboard has so far, like, I've not tested the latest BIOS, but my past experience with this motherboard is that for dual rank, it really doesn't clock that high. So I want to test the MSI ITX board because I don't, like, maybe MSI has better support for these memory ICs. There goes another error. So yeah, this is definitely not stable. I would not run this daily whatsoever. You really want to do a mem test pass to like 400%. But uh, yeah, okay. Still, this is not so unstable that it would be impossible to get similar settings to what I, I just I just set up. So, yeah. Um, I kind of consider that the... Consider this it for, for the video because... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can show you the memory sticks. I'm going to turn off the system. Where is it? Where's the power button? There it is. Move the mouse out of the way. 
this out of the way. Cool. So that shut down. And uh, here are the heroes of today's show. Um, we go. I'm gonna grab the other one. Ta-da! So that's the memory sticks, and as I said at the start of the video, uh, pretty standard, you know, uh, B2 DDR4 PCB layout. So that's why we have the memory chips grouped like this, like this. Right, there's your little SPD chip, and they are double-sided because, of course, there's 16 chips on these. So that's that's where they get their dual rank from. Um, and yeah, and uh, the part number is M378A4G43MB1CTD. Um, and yeah, they're just generic Samsung, Samsung memory sticks, which... Uh, yeah, I have a lot of plans for these. These might end up in my daily system if I ever get another kit of 32 gig memory sticks uh, to use instead. Because obviously, like, I want to have a... I wa want to have a 32 gig... Well, I want to have some 32 gig memory sticks to use for testing out motherboards. But uh, at the same time, I don't, like... Well, eventually, I'll probably get another set of 32 gig sticks. And then these will probably move into my daily system because... It's not like I need 64 gigs of RAM, it's just like, if I already have 64 gigs of RAM, and they're not really, like, viable for benchmarking, then why not use them in my daily system? Also, what's interesting to note about these is that these are some really square-looking DDR4 memory ICs. They're not normally this fat. <laughs> they're normally a bit slimmer, so... Yeah, um... That's the, that's the Samsung... Uh... 32 gig OEM... DDR4 memory sticks, um, and they are unregistered, so you can just install them in anything. That's that's like the cool thing, because I know servers have had 32 gig DIMMs for ages, but these are the first 32 gig DIMMs that at least I'm aware of that you can just stick into like a, a coffee like system, like a, a, a daily system, right? So like, um, I'm also going to be testing these on Ryzen, um, probably with one of the MSI boards. It's just I, I don't even know if the they have BIOSes updated to support these 32 gig sticks yet, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, huge thanks to the patrons for you know uh, you know supporting the channel, and as a result, I can I can do things like buy uh, you know thirty two gig uh, sticks like this because obviously Samsung's never going to sample me, right? They're far too big to care about my little channel. Um, so yeah, huge thanks to the patrons and everybody who buys like the T-shirts that you can find uh, on Teespring and and all well all the other merch on Teespring as well. So you can find links to the Patreon and uh, Teespring down in the description below. That helps fund things like, say, these memory sticks right here. Um, and uh, what else did I want to say? Yeah, like, share, subscribe, leave any comment. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, join the note, uh, ring the notification bell. Uh, what else was there? If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them down in the comments section below. And, uh, oh, I screwed up my outro because I, I did it in reverse because I thanked the patrons first and so... Cool, so I guess I've just said everything I want to say for the outro. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.